In this video, guys, I'm gonna be making a Barbie and Ken in a cake box. Well, it's not a cake box, it's a cake that's meant to look like a Barbie and Ken box. <laughs> also, keep an eye out in the video for how you can win the molds or a set of the molds that I've used for making these guys too. So to begin with, we're gonna start by creating the dolls. So we're gonna create Barbie and Ken. I'm gonna make them out of modeling paste and I'll put the links below the video to everything that I have used. We're gonna use molds for these as well. You can obviously make the Barbie and Ken completely freehand if you want, but I know I haven't got a video yet for using my male mold. So I thought we'd use him for Ken and then I might as well use the mold for Barbie as well. So we're gonna fill the molds with modeling paste. Saracino is this one. It does firm up, but it stays pretty soft. So if you want to eat it on the cake or cut through it on the cake, then it's easy to cut through still and it tastes quite vanilla-y, this one. So I'm gonna fill all my molds. So I'm gonna fill like the arms, legs, body, and the head. Now, I haven't spent a lot of time doing it on this particular one because the backs of the legs and everything are gonna be covered up by the cake itself because Ken and Barbie are gonna be stuck against the cake. But normally if I was making a figure that would be kind of 3D, I'd spend a little bit longer neatening up all the backs of the legs and everything like that so that you don't see seams on them anywhere. And guys, what I'll do is I might make another video of using the molds in a bit more detail. So I've got lots of videos on using the female mold and some of the other molds, but I haven't got any really on using the male one. So if it's something you'd like more videos on, let me know and we can always do a more detailed one on that for you. So you want to leave them in the molds a bit before removing them just because this paste can get very soft and warm and it's easier to pull out if they're firmed up a little bit. You can see at the top and bottom of the legs, there's like a little slit so you can put either like a cocktail stick or a wire in to help you remove the legs from the mold. So we're gonna do the same with the female, just using the large female mold and the face mold that's called Abby. Again, I'll put links below the videos, guys, so that if you want to use the same molds, you can do. These are the molds that I've created, so obviously you can use different ones if you prefer. I am just gonna try and rub out the seam on the female legs because these pop out so the seam is like the side of the legs whereas on Ken the seam is at the back so we're not gonna see it on Ken's but on Barbie's we might. So there are more videos on using the female molds as well guys and I'll put a link in the corner of the video for if you want to see more on that. So once I've had a little bit of time to firm up you can pull all the parts out of the mold. They've still got a little bit of flex but that's fine. Rub down any seams if you think they're gonna be seen. I'm just gonna point Barbie's toes a little bit. And of course you can move around the hands a little bit too. And what you have to be careful of when pulling the male's legs out is the foot. So if your paste is very soft, the foot and the leg will stretch as you pull it out. And Ken's got quite a big foot, or the male mold has got quite a big foot. So just watch out for that. Now on mine, I've just cut it down a little bit because it did stretch. I have got a crack in the bottom of one of his legs, but it's gonna be covered up by the box. So I'm not too worried about that. So for making the heads, I've done the same thing, just using the molds. I've used the Kurt face and the Abby face. You're just gonna fill them with modeling paste and we can pop that out and then paint them up using dusts, um, edible pens. Now for these faces, guys, I'd made these in a Facebook Live or two separate Facebook Lives actually. So you can still find the full Facebook Lives over on my Facebook page, which is just Zoe's Fancy Cakes. And you can watch there in real time, me actually making the faces if if you'd like to watch it in real time, that is. I'm gonna piece together all the body parts and then I'm gonna dress him. I'm using modeling paste again for Ken and we're gonna create a striped shirt and matching shorts for him. So we've rolled the stripes into the pink just to flatten them a little bit. We're cutting a strip and we're gonna wrap that around the top of his legs, covering kind of all the joins between the body and the legs. And let's push that on for a pair of shorts. We can put some stitching lines on there too. I'll link the tool I've used below the video as well. And we'll do the same for the shirt. So I haven't bothered sticking his arms on yet. We're gonna put the shirt on first. Just trying to fold over where the collar's gonna go so I can work out where that collar wants to be. And then I'll just make one for the other side or a piece the same for the other side. Stick our stripes on, and then we'll get them set in place on each side of the body, folding that collar over. You can put a bit of water on the body or on the shirt to stick this in place, or you can use edible glue as well. You can put your Ken in a different outfit to what I have done too. And let's just stick some stripes on the collar as well. Let's get some little buttonholes down the front of the shirt and some stitching detail too. And then the tricky bit, roll in some really tiny pieces of modeling paste for his buttons. So let's start to piece together Barbie. Now I'm sticking the legs to the body with just more modeling paste, but the modeling paste is mixed with a bit of water, so it's really sticky. Now 
I made her a quite pale colour paste, so I'm just adding a bit of powdered dust, it's an edible dust, to her legs just to darken them a little bit. And we're just cutting like a curved shape. It could be a circle. If you've got a circle cutter, you can use a circle cutter to create like a bit of a skirt for her or the bottom of a dress. Put a slit in the top and then we're kind of just folding it so it becomes more pleated. And then I'm just gonna trim a bit off the top and the bottom, but test it against your Barbie's body so you can see what length you actually want it. And of course you can choose a completely different outfit to what I have done for her. So let's just push that in place. It's got a piece of thin white for the top. So again, it's all modeling paste that I'm using for this. If you want to use fondant, you can. I just find it's a bit soft for me to work with. You might even want to use modeling chocolate if you prefer, guys. It's gonna taste a bit nicer on the cake as well. So taking a head that I made earlier, we're gonna stick that in place. I'm just cut out a bit of the hair so that it fits on around her neck and shoulders. Add a bit of stitching around the edge of her dress and then we can paint the dress. So I considered sticking the little pattern on. I don't know, what, what do you call the pattern on her dress? Is it checks or is it, I don't know what it's called. I did fashion at university, believe it or not. I should know these things, shouldn't I? But I'm just painting them on. I, I thought that was the easiest way. The problem is I'm not very good at painting on straight lines, but I thought if I made it in paste and stuck it on, it would stick out a little bit too much and maybe be a bit too sort of lumpy bumpy but it's not very neat this way I did it either. So if you've got any tips on how you think I should have made the uh, patterning on the dress, let me know. Maybe a stencil would have been quite good. I think if I'd have done a stencil, I would have stenciled it while it was rolled out flat and then let it let the stenciling dry a tiny bit. And then I could have folded it into shape and put it on her. See, you don't think of these things after you've made it, do you? But I'm not making her again. <laughs> So I'm gonna make her a little buckle to stick on a belt and then we can stick those arms in place. And I did forget to dust them in advance. So let's try and add a bit of color to them. So same for Ken, stick his head on in place. At the moment, I haven't really stuck it on actually. It's just resting against his neck. And for the arms, I'm gonna add the sleeves before we stick them onto the body. So it's just wrapping a piece of paste around the top of each arm. And then we'll cut a couple more strips to stick around the end so it looks like the sleeve is turned up a little bit and then we can press those in place onto the body. I did make him some little sunglasses, again it's in the Facebook live, I just used the Sylvia Mancini sunglasses cutters, I'll put links to them below as well so you can see them, but don't worry that the heads are attached at this point, it's absolutely fine. I haven't given them shoes but it's we're not going to see their feet. So I've got some card here, and these were, it was actually a cake card that I've cut in half. It was a 12 inch square. Got some six inch square cakes. Now, ideally, if you've got a 12 inch square cake that you can cut in half so it matches with these boards, then that is gonna be ideal. But I only had the six inch square ones in and I bought them, I didn't bake them. I completely cheated again. So what I'm gonna do is I have covered each of these cake cards and I apologize that it's not in here. Um, you can't tell they're actually covered in a piece of acetate. I just stuck it down on there with shortening and then I covered that in pink ganache, put on my two cakes, a layer of buttercream, then my other two cakes, then another layer of pink ganache and then this top card that's gonna sit on the top also has that acetate on. So it's just clear acetate, you buy it for baking and making cakes with and I am not gonna throw that away, I'm gonna keep that for future projects as well guys because it does come in handy, that acetate. So trip myself to a new, a new smoother. It's plastic this one so just be careful if you've got a plastic one that you don't catch the edges because they can chip if you're not careful. And I just want to hold it against here just to check that I've got it level. And you can see that actually it's sloping a little bit. I've not cut my cakes very level. So let's take that off. Let's add a bit more ganache and try and even that up. And then let's get it stuck back down. So remember there's acetate between my ganache and this cake board. I should have gone for something that you could see because the acetate is see-through so you can't really see it very well. So apologies guys. But I am now just gonna fill all these gaps with that pink ganache, which is white chocolate ganache. You can see the acetate now, I'm pulling that off. So let it set first, then you can pull it off. And then I'm gonna cover, well, I'm not gonna fully cover, but I'm gonna use some pink fondant. We're gonna add a little bit of Tylos to it because I want it to be thin, but I also want it to hold its shape. So I'm gonna add a little bit of Tylos, which is just gonna firm it up and we're gonna roll it nice and thin. Now I'm measuring it to the size of the box or the cake, what will be the Barbie box. 
So I need them long enough for each side and wide enough for sort of the bottom and top. And I want it to be about two inches taller than my cake. Now don't worry that it's a bit messy on the top of the cake. We're gonna fill that in in a bit. This piece that I'm sticking on first is the same width as my box, but two inches taller. I have to add a small piece just at the other side just to help support it because it was bending a little bit. And then the one at the side is now going to go on. So the same kind of length as the side, just stick it to the edge of that. And then a second little strip that kind of goes from the top of my cake to the top of that piece I've just put on just to help firm it up. Now I do want it to be as thin as possible because I want a huge amount of fondant on this and I'm not going to put any on the back of the cake, which will be the back of the box, but that will have pink ganache on the back. So it's fine. So we're just going to repeat the same on the other side and then also on the bottom. It kept one into topple, so I was just finding anything I could in my cupboard to kind of support it. But obviously it needs to be stuff that's food friendly. So the top piece, when we stand the box up, will be supported by the two side pieces. Hopefully you'll see what I mean when I stand it up. I'm going to work on the front. So you do want your fondant to dry pretty firm. If you want to use modeling paste, you can do, but I thought fondant would be better. So I've got one of those cake cards that I use, which is the same size as my cake, and I'm cutting around it, leaving a few extra millimeters all the way around the edge. And we're gonna create like the front of the Barbie box. Now I have bought one of the Barbie dolls. In fact, should we run a competition for her? I can't decide whether I'm keeping this doll or whether I'm gonna give her away for competition. Let me know. Should we run a competition for this Barbie or should I just keep her? I traced the Barbie logo and stuff off the front of this doll's box. You obviously don't have to do that. You can put whatever you want on the front or you can find images online. And I then just mark it all in with a Dresden tool. And now mine's not exactly the same. I kind of made some bits up, but that's fine. And then we're gonna cut out all the bits we don't need. So this central bit, um, carefully pull that out. There is lots of corn flour on the back of this just because I didn't want it sticking. Trim any extra bits off where it's a bit long. I'm just gonna add a white trim all the way around the inside here. And I'm gonna stick some white modeling paste to the word Barbie. So I am using modeling paste this time, got it nice and thin, really thin. So that when I press it on, I can see through to where I'd written Barbie earlier. Now this actually was pretty time consuming. It took me longer than I thought. So it probably wasn't the easiest way to do it. So if you wanna make it all by hand, you can do it the same as what I am doing here. I had to cut out all around the edges, but I could see underneath where I needed to cut. Alternatively, guys, you can just print with an edible printer. So if you've got an edible printer, you could print whatever you want the front of your box to look like and stick it on instead. Do all the same then with the star and the heart, but I change like the colors that we need for, for the other bits. Put a yellow line around here. I did consider painting it on guys, but sometimes I don't get a smooth sort of look with the color when when I'm doing like long lines also I, I'm bad at doing a straight line as you already know so if you make a Barbie box like this one guys do you think you will do it the long way around sort of doing each bit by hand like what I'm doing on this one or do you think you would just save yourself a bit of time <laughs> and energy and stress by just printing it out which would you find easiest if you've got star shaped cutters, guys, it's going to make your life a lot easier. I do have, but I could not find them anywhere. So like I say, you can use an edible printer, guys. I just scanned my actual Barbie box, which kind of looks like a ghost, doesn't it, at the top of this? <laughs> Where um, that bit didn't scan very well, but it's fine because we only need the logo down here. I didn't spend very long on this one. I just kind of cut out the middle bit, stuck a yellow line on and stuck that edible print at the bottom. Remember, you do need an edible printer for the edible prints. Don't just stick it in your normal printer that with normal ink. While that's firming up, what I'm gonna do is melt some candy buttons. You can use chocolate if you want. I, I've got some candy buttons here because they're white and then I'm gonna add some color to it. So I'm gonna use the color mill for this because it's ideal for putting in chocolate. And I don't need a lot. Although I wish I'd gone a tiny bit darker with it. And then I'm gonna spread it into the box. So this sits now on top of the cake. And then while it's still wet, so you have to be pretty quick, I'm gonna plop, is plop the right word? I'm gonna pop Ken's body into there and then I can push his head in place. Just be careful because it can be quite messy. Like if you drop Ken in on his side, it's gonna be covered in these candy melts. So just be very careful. Alternatively guys, you can use like ready-made chocolate drip in various colors as well. So we're just gonna pour that in onto our cake. It should level off, you know, if your cake wasn't very even on the top. Just make sure that you level it off as much as you can. So 
Once the fronts of your boxes have had plenty of time to firm up, we can look at adding them to your cake box. So you can either lift it on and stick it on while your box is laying down. And I just used a bit of edible glue guys, but if it's not strong enough, you can use some leftover pink ganache to stick the front of the box to like the sides of the cake. Make sure it's set before you lift the box up. So to add them to a cake board, guys, I'm just gonna add some leftover buttercream that I had, all ganache. Ganache is probably gonna be a bit firmer. And then very carefully pick up your cake and you can pop that onto your board. And it does help if you did get corn flour on the side to try and dust that off. I didn't do that and I wish I had spent the time doing that. So which one do you prefer now they're finished? Do you prefer the one where we use the edible print or the one where I made the front by hand? This one took probably too long, maybe isn't as neat. Is it cheating to use an edible print? It's just quicker. Just make sure you do use an edible printer and not a normal printer for, uh, for your edible prints, guys. So yeah, mine doesn't quite look like the real one, but it's fine, the cake, they're gonna be eaten. So um, I'm sure if you made one, no one would expect it to look exactly the same as the actual one. I bought this to give away for a competition, guys, but I don't know if I can part with my Barbie doll. They only had Barbie, they didn't have Ken or President Barbie or any of the other ones in the toy shop I went to, but I did get her car. So competition time, chance to win the molds that I have used for making Ken and Barbie here. So you can have a go at making your own, as well as loads of other different figures that you can make with them, which I've got a full playlist of um, on my YouTube channel. So you can see different ideas for them. So all you have to do guys is comment under this video to let me know which of my YouTube videos and that could be out of any of my YouTube videos, is your favorite. So comment below with your favorite YouTube video of mine. I'll pick a winner at random on Friday the 11th of August, and that's 2023, in case anybody's watching after that date or after this year. Um, and we will message you in the comments below. We'll reply to your message to let you know if you have won. Good luck, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this one guys, see you for the next video.